Well, what can of worms did I open up today? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joshua Verwers, and if you are new here, I just wanna let you know that every time I upload a new video, it is really designed to encourage you to live by faith and share that faith online. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the little bell so YouTube notifies you every time I upload a new video. Now for those of you that are just now joining us, this is uh, day 21 of Vlogist, and we're in this series, Vlog Pastors, where me and a fellow pastor down in Texas, Jared Brown, from the channel Abide of Brownie are answering questions every single day to really encourage our faith, stir conversations around our faith, and as he would put it, really have you taste and see the extravagant love of God. Now today's question actually came from me, but it was inspired by one of my friends, Eric, who also has a YouTube channel called Radioactive Blueberries. I'll go ahead and link him down in the description below too, so you can check out the video that inspired this. And what I'm really wanting us to tackle is, what are our thoughts on Joshua Harris and Marty Sampson essentially saying that they're no longer Christians? Now let me clarify, Marty Sampson didn't really say that. I mean, he alluded to it with that first Instagram post that has now said since been deleted, but Joshua Harris, in his own words, from his own Instagram post that is still up, he actually said that. And to quote him, he said, by all the measurements I have for defining a Christian, I am not a Christian. What do we do with that type of a statement? How do we react to that type of a statement? See, Joshua Harris, for those that don't know, he was a popular Christian author and pastor, wrote the book, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, which I actually never read, but Joshua Harris did impact me. More than 10 years ago, I got up at church and I did this little skit around Easter that was actually written by Joshua Harris called The Room. And it was one of those really touching and moving things that impacted my life, that made me think about God in a fresh new way. And I know that that skit that was done at our church really impacted others because I still get people talking about it here over a decade later. And if you don't know who Marty Sampson is, he's a writer and a co-writer for a lot of songs, uh, from Hillsong to Delirious. And while he didn't outright say that, the original post has been deleted, and I'm not going to rehash that. If he felt the need to take it, I'm going to leave it there. But since he's talked about having doubts and really struggling with things and having, I think his own words were, a shaky faith, what do I think about that? And really, I think this goes beyond just these two situations. I think it goes to the broader issue of really having doubts and even apostasy. And what should our thoughts as Christians be? How should we be responding? How should we be reacting? What should we be doing? So I'm just going to share my thoughts. And these may be unpopular thoughts, and they may not be what you're hearing from other people. And if they don't like it, I don't really care. So let me first come out and say this. For those that think that they need to hop on the internet soapbox and start condemning these people, or really anybody else that has doubts or has even fallen away from faith into that state of apostasy, if they think that it is their biblical duty to stand up on the internet soapbox and blast them, I have no idea what Bible those guys are reading. To me, there are only a couple instances that I see of the early apostles actually publicly calling out people that have been in error, and the ones they did, they had a personal relationship with. And quite frankly, most of us don't have that personal relationship with Joshua Harris or Marty Sampson, so really, I think maybe we should take 1 Thessalonians 4.11 to mind and mind our own business. Now with Joshua Harris, I don't know if this is a theological apostasy or if it's a moral apostasy. I don't know where his heart really is, so really I just want to pray for him. I want him to come back to faith. I want to see him come through this and really have a huge impact for God's kingdom. It's not like there's ever been anybody who has denied Jesus, I don't know, say three times, and then... God got a hold of them and revealed himself in a deeper way to them that they stand up and publicly proclaim a huge message about who Jesus is to the point that 3,000 people get saved. No, I mean, Peter never did that. Now, if they have cut themselves off, like Joshua Harris has said, and he says, I'm no longer a Christian, then I'm also going to take the biblical advice that is found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm going to cut myself off from him. I'm just not going to listen to him anymore. 
not going to beat him up. Go ahead and go your way. You're going to show over time whether or not you come back to faith and if you're with us or if you aren't with us and then I'll just kind of wonder, was he ever truly with us? Wait, that's another reference. First John 2.19 maybe? And then we've got Marty Sampson who to me it seems like he's just really struggling and wrestling with doubt right now. And again, for those of us that don't have a relationship with him, there's not really anything that we can do. But for those that do have a relationship with him, I would hope that somebody would be coming alongside him and really trying to encourage him, really trying to help him get through this season of doubt that he has by pressing in deeper to God. I mean, to me, this is kind of like one of those Hebrews chapter 3 approaches that we need to take heed, take care that there's not an evil heart in any one of us that we're departing from the faith. But but while today is still today, we need to be encouraging one another. We need to be exhorting and lifting up one another as much as we can so that we remain and we stand faithful till the end. This is one of the things that I probably value most in my life, having those people that I can call out on when I'm struggling and wrestling with things, yes, even when I'm having doubts about things that I find in this scripture, and what do I do with this? How do I reconcile it? I call out to people that I can trust, that will call me out on all of my BS when I need it and say I'm wrong when I'm wrong, but these are also people that show me love and grace and mercy when I need it. This is also something that I've tried to instill in other people to let them know I'm one of those people that I could be counted on in them. And actually there's a guy in our church that, you know what, I've got to get going and meet up with him because I'm sure he's waiting on me right now, so uh, yeah. We'll catch up here in a little bit. See, it's things like that, and it's meetings like that, gatherings like that, that honestly, I think the body of Christ needs a whole lot more of. Those are the things that I think will help us get through our doubts and have a really great faith. So I absolutely love John's heart because he had gotten a hold of me a couple of months ago and, and he had just asked if we could get together, have coffee on a regular basis because he was just wanting to, to talk, to work through some things and really just needed some like everyday advice and accountability. Okay, so where were we? Oh yeah, so those that are dealing with doubt and the need for accountability, the, the need for somebody to speak into our lives in such a way that they will just speak truth, but they'll speak it in love. So that's kind of what I love doing and I want done. And I guess my hope is that with anybody like Marty Sampson or whoever else there winds up being that is having doubts with their faith, that they won't receive condemnation or rebuke, but they'll rather receive support and encouragement. So there are my thoughts. That's what I think about this whole situation. Honestly, I think if I were to sum this up, mind your own business and help those that you're close to. So I hope that was a breath of fresh air when it comes to this situation. And I hope that's something that not only you guys will take away and remember if this or when this happens again, I hope it's something that I remember my own words that really come from his word. And I remember this when the next time happens. Now, I'm also excited to head over to Jared's channel and hear what he has to say and what his thoughts or opinions are. It could be similar, it could be opposite, I have no idea what to expect, but I'm going to be heading there right now. Well, actually, I'm recording this yesterday. You're watching it today, I recorded this yesterday, so my time yesterday, I'm not going right now. I'm getting ready to go to bed right now, but you guys are right now going to... So I'm also going to head over to his channel and check out what the question for the day is, what question we're going to be discussing tomorrow. So you guys should head over there too. Make sure to subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. And until tomorrow, stay blessed, enjoy God's best, and have a great day. You know, it's times like this that my camera and YouTube feels like my, my TARDIS and I'm doing a little bit of time travel. I was doing a pretty good job pointing at that. You couldn't even see what I was clicking on, but... Oh wait, now you do. I'm all out of focus. Oh no, what are we gonna do?
stupid fly. Got him.